Good afternoon, Southwest Florida. I'm Bree Walling. This Naples Herald lunch break is sponsored by our friends at Fusillo Kia of Cape Coral. This afternoon, we'll tell you about a helicopter crash at the Grand Canyon, Olympians dealing with more winter than expected for the 2018 games, and more. Today is Monday, February 12th, and this is the lunch break. Four survivors of a deadly tour helicopter crash onto the jagged rocks of the Grand Canyon were being treated at a Nevada hospital while crews tackled the difficult terrain in a remote area to try to recover the bodies of three other people. Six British tourists and a pilot were on board the Papillion Grand Canyon helicopter's chopper when it crashed under unknown circumstances on Saturday evening near Quartermaster Canyon by the Grand Canyon's west rim. Windy conditions, darkness, and the rugged terrain made it difficult to reach the helicopter's wreckage. Rescue crews had to fly in, walk to the crash site, and use night vision goggles to find their way around. On Sunday, National Transportation Safety Board officials began investigating what caused the chopper to go down. The Nevada-based company website says it flies roughly 600,000 passengers a year around the Grand Canyon and on other tours. Witnesses of the crash described a gruesome scene. One witness said he had taken helicopter rides for photo shoots for the past few years and generally felt safe while on board, but described the crash aftermath as the worst thing he had ever seen. The tour company offered sympathies and promised full cooperation with the crash investigators. U.S. stocks are posting solid gains today as energy companies recover some of their recent losses. Stocks rose Friday but still wound up with their worst week in two years following several days of turbulence. Over the weekend, banks, retailers, and technology companies also climbed higher. It took just nine days for stocks to plunge 10% from their latest peak set on January 26th. That's known on Wall Street as a market correction. According to LPL Financial, that's the swiftest move from a record high to a correction for the S&P 500. The most widely used market benchmark. The index rose 1.5 percent Friday but still wound up with its worst weekly loss in more than two years. Retailers, apparel makers, and other companies that focus on consumers made some of the largest gains. They held up relatively well during the steep downturn over the last two weeks. Technology companies also rose. They've slumped recently after winning a big portion of the market's gains over the last year. In the week ahead, investors will watch U.S. inflation and retail sales figures on Wednesday very closely. Inflation in particular will be of interest as it could affect expectations of more rate increases by the Federal Reserve. Fears of more aggressive interest rate hikes have been one of the triggers of last week's stock market sell-off. Japan reports economic growth on Wednesday and the U.S. issues factory output data on Thursday. The Winter Olympics are supposed to be cold, of course, just not as cold as it has been for the athletes aiming for the gold. Wind and ice pellets left the best ski jumpers on the planet dealing with swirling gusts aiming to shoot straight, and Olympic snowboarders simply trying to stay upright in conditions that many felt were unfit for competition. All around the games, athletes and fans are dealing with conditions that have tested even the most seasoned winter sports veterans. The raw air sent hundreds of fans to the exit Sunday when qualifying was called off after women's slopes style devolved into a mess of mistakes. Of the 50 runs, 41 ended with a fall or a rider essentially giving up. Many of the competing snowboarders didn't think they should have been out there. And at ski jumping, giant netting was set up to reduce the wind chill that can blow at three times the optimal velocity for the sport, though it seemed the precaution didn't help much. Alpine skiing, meanwhile, still hasn't even been able to get started. Each of the first two races of the program were called off hours before they were supposed to begin. Both of those have been move to Thursday when conditions are supposed to be slightly more manageable. The forecast calls for more high winds Tuesday and Wednesday. And that was a lunch break for today. I'm Bree Walling. For your twice daily news fix, head over to the Naples Herald YouTube channel and subscribe. Leave us a comment to let us know your thoughts on the news or what you would like to hear about. The lunch break airs Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. right here at NaplesHerald.com. And don't forget to check out our morning report that also airs Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.